mostly sunny and dry across the CSRA today. How long will the sunshine and dry weather stay with us? I'll have the answer coming up. Your 10 p.m. news starts right now. Moments of silence were held in New York City this morning, honoring the lives lost on September 11, 2001. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Payton. Today marks the 20th anniversary since the 9-11 terror attacks happened right here on American soil. This morning, President Biden and the First Lady were in New York together, along with former presidents Clinton and Obama and their wives. Back in 2001, the World Trade Center towers were the first struck by hijacked jetliners. At the ceremony today, the names of the over 2,500 people that died in New York City that day were read aloud. America Airlines Flight 77 struck the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, killing almost 200 people. A flag was draped over the world's largest office building during a sunrise service this morning. A memorial service was also held at the time of the attack at the Pentagon. And in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, a service was also held this morning to honor the 44 lives lost on United Flight 93. Hijackers took over Flight 93 and intended to hit the U.S. Capitol building, but passengers on the flight fought back and the plane crashed in a small field in Pennsylvania town. Well, former President Georgia George W. Bush was at the service today and described what he saw from Americans on that day. So much of our politics has become a naked appeal to anger, fear, and resentment. That leaves us worried about our nation and our future together. I come without explanations or solutions. I can only tell you what I've seen. On America's day of trial and grief, I saw millions of people instinctively grab for a neighbor's hand and rally to the cause of one another. That is the America I know. President Biden visited the Flight 93 Memorial after leaving New York, and he spoke to the media about how difficult it is to see these memorials. These memorials are really important, but they're also incredibly difficult for the people who are affected by them. Because it brings back the moment you got the phone call. It brings back that instant you got the news many years go by. And here at home, Fort Gordon joined the long list of people who held ceremonies today for the victims of the 9-11 attacks. Fox 54's Jared Eggleston was there and he joins me live in the studio this evening with a look at the ceremony. Jared. Maya, good evening. Fox 54 was the only TV crew out at Fort Gordon this morning as officials remembered and honored those lost in the September 11th terrorist attacks. It was a morning of reflection and remembrance. Where were you on 9-11-2001? Service members and their families gathered at Fort Gordon's Barton Field Saturday morning to reflect and honor those lost in the September 11th terrorist attacks. Paul Stanton was the keynote speaker. He's the commanding general for the Cyber Center of Excellence in Fort Gordon. All of us can describe exactly where we were when we first heard the news, when we first saw the horrific images. His speech recounted the day and honored the first responders with a theme of patriotism. Risking lives, their own lives, for those of others. Because we are Americans. Harness the emotions of today. Do something positive, help each other, take action because we're Americans. And as that day, 20 years ago, gets further away, Stanton says recounting experiences is the best way to never forget. And when we relay our personal experiences, it, can, it creates that connection um, and, and inspires uh, those that even weren't alive to realize what it means to rally to the cause uh, and, and to, as Americans, take action. Now, Fort Gordon also had a cannon fire at each major time of the day, starting at 846 this morning when the first plane struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center 20 years ago. 
Live in the studio, I'm Jared Eggleston, Fox 54 News Now. And of course, we will never forget. It still brings tears to my eyes and goosebumps to my skin when I see those images out there. So now let's talk about the weather. It was a beautiful day across the CSRA today. Lots of sunshine and low humidity. Made it feel very pleasant outside. No moisture around, so that means live Doppler radar is dry. No color on the map. No rainfall to talk about temperatures. Very comfortable with low relative humidity out there. 66 degrees in Augusta. We have 67 in Aiken. 72 degrees in Waynesboro. 72 in Swainsboro. We also have 72 in Bamberg. 71 in McCormick. One of the cooler spots is Washington at 68. Thompson, you are 67. Your forecast for the next couple hours shows mainly clear skies with temperatures dropping down near 60 degrees overnight tonight. Lots of sunshine as you're headed off to a church tomorrow morning. Comfortable temperatures as well. It's going to be a great day to be outdoors. Your poolside forecast. Lots of sunshine out there. Temperatures in the 80s by 2 p.m. By 4 p.m., you're going to need the sunglasses and the sunscreen. High temperatures right around 90 degrees. That's a look at weather for now. Maya? Thanks, Melinda. As we pause to remember the attacks of 9-11, former Augusta Mayor Bob Young is doing the same. In the days following the attack, Young coordinated a fundraiser for those affected. And under a week, he says the city and the region had raised upwards of $1.2 million for victims. He and other city leaders hand delivered a check to the New York City and, of course, to its former mayor, Rudy Giuliani. I met with the fire chief and Mayor Giuliani briefly and presented them the check and uh, relayed community sentiments to the people of New York and the mayor was very gracious and told us that we were the first community that had come to New York and really brought anything uh, tangible uh, to help them with their recovery. So we're very proud of that moment. For more on our conversation with former Mayor Young, as he recounts visiting Ground Zero and New York following the attacks, just go to our website, WFXG.com. As today marks 20 years since the deadly September 11th terror attacks, Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey takes a look at how President Biden's administration is dealing with the fight against terror. A key component of the Biden doctrine is over the horizon counterterrorism capability. That means tracking terror from far away. And it's a break from previous post 9-11 presidents, including Obama, whose anti-terror strategy relied heavily upon boots on the ground in Afghanistan. There's a future there that is brighter, not only for the Afghan people, but for most importantly, for American security. Uh, and, and you guys are, are, are the tip of the spear. But without Americans in Afghanistan anymore, American military muscle will be hundreds or thousands of miles away. We're going to retain an over-the-horizon capability that if they were to come back to be able to take them out, surgically move. Critics charge this won't work. Let me just say that that's more like over the rainbow. Biden's own defense secretary says there's no question that it will be more difficult to identify and engage threats that emanate from the region. A Trump era national security advisor recently explained why. The hours it, it takes to fly either an unmanned or a manned mission from uh, the Gulf to, to Afghanistan uh, is, is extensive. So, you know, in that time period, targets can move, uh, hostages can be moved. However, when the president made this promise, we will not forgive, we will not forget. We'll hunt you down to the ends of the earth and we will you will pay the ultimate price. That happened. Our over the horizon capacity can work and has worked in going after ISIS targets and killing people who went after our troops. Some doubt the long term effectiveness of leaving terrorists alone in Afghanistan. I would say this without soldiers on the ground with the CIA present helping them. The likelihood of a nine, another 9-11 has gone up by 70 or 80 percent. But for now, the president is not looking back. The war in Afghanistan is now over. And the president defends the way he pulled out by arguing that if the men who planned 9-11 had done it in a country other than Afghanistan, then the U.S. never would have gone there in the first place. And now he is counting on advances in military technology to keep tabs on the terrorists who could try to do it again. At the White House, Peter Ducey, Fox News. Now, before we go to break, here's a look at your almanac for today. The high temperature was a comfortable 87 degrees, and the morning low was a cool 58. How's the rest of your weekend forecast shaping up? I'll have the details coming up. Stay with us.